Okay, so today we're going to finish off our series on arenas with the idea of a per thread arena. Now, in most programs, they are multi threaded, which means that we, are, we don't have a single execution of code, we have multiple executions of code happening simultaneously, and these all happen in their own individual threads, right? Now, if we wanted to allocate memory dynamically because it can't fulfill the lifetimes of a stack, then we would use something like malloc and free. Now, malloc and free have been designed in such a way that we are promised that they will be thread safe, so we won't have any race conditions or overwrites or anything like that. However, if we're using an arena, with our current knowledge, the only way we can do it is these threads share a an arena, right? All of these threads are trying to access the same arena. Now, one obvious problem which you may see is that we can have race conditions, so multiple threads are trying to access this arena at the same time. So we have to wrap this in a mutex, or we can also do a lock-free approach using the atomic instructions. But both approaches aren't ideal because we have the overhead of having to switch between multiple threads to access this arena. And oftentimes we have to use arenas a lot if we're allocating, allocating memory a lot. So what's the alternative to this approach? Well, what we can do is we can have a global arena per thread. So each thread has its own local global arena. And then we can also have a few scratch arenas. So this way we don't have to communicate between threads to access the arena, each thread can just allocate on its own arena and we don't have to worry about anything else. And if we do have to share memory between these threads, we can use malloc and free or we can also just have a shared arena between all of these threads and they can all access it. So now I'm going to show you guys how we can write a simple... So here I've got the code from the last tutorial and we just created a few scratch arenas and then I'll show you guys how we can use them. So I'm just going to remove this for now because we have to rewrite some of this code. So the first thing we need is we need a way to have each thread have its own local, global and scratch arenas. Now fortunately we've got a nice structure right here which is called context. I'm going to call it thread context now. And I'm going to label it as thread local. What this does is it tells the compiler that each thread should have access to this global variable and it should be separate for each one. So we can have five threads which will access this global variable, but they'll all be accessing their own copy of it. So we won't have any like overwrite, we won't have multiple threads sharing the same arenas. So here I was in this global variable, I marked it as static, which means that you can't, this only this, this global variable is local to this translation unit, right? So we can't just do X turn to get this, this variable from another thread, or another translation unit rather. So what we can do now is create a function to, or rather we're going to create a few, an array to hold all the different threads. Now in order to create a thread, we need to first have a function to do it. So this is operating system specific, but on Windows you can use the create thread function. And I'll just copy this and then we're going to change the parameters here. And this will just create a thread for us. So here I'll just do, I'll just paste this and... If I just check the documentation. So the first thing we need to do is specify LP security attributes. This doesn't really matter, this can be null. For the stack size, I'll just set this to be equal to zero because this will just default to the default stack size, which the process has. And then we have a thread function, which is going to be the routine the thread's gonna start running. And then the parameters for the thread function, I'm just gonna call this, I'll leave, I'll leave, I'll leave it empty right now. We'll fill it out later. And then for the this D word, we can set it to zero. And then for this last parameter, we can just set that to no, I think. And this should hopefully work. So this returns a handle to us, and what this handle basically is, is a way to access the thread, so we can just call this thread. And if I compile this, it should compile hopefully. Also we need to include windows.h for it to work. Okay, so we have to fill out the thread function, also pass in an argument to it. 
that's fine. So here I just create a simple thread function. It has to have this following syntax because Windows will call this thread function. I'll take an avoid pointer called data. And for now I'll just, this void point is just going to be a context. I'll just say ctx is equal to thread context of data. And also dereference it. So now what we can do is I'm going to create an array of uh, I'm going to create multiple threads and then keep all the handles to them in an array, and then also create a bunch of thread contexts which we will pass into these threads. So here I'll create an array. I'll call it thread array. It's going to have let's say five threads. Then I'll create another handle, or well, not a handle, but a thread context array. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. This will be five elements and I will set this to zero. So I'll say for it i is equal to zero, i is less than array count thread array. And array count's not defined. This is a macro I like to use, so I'm gonna define it quickly. This is just gonna tell us how many elements are inside of the this array on the stack. So we just say x, so size of x divided by size of x zero. So the the whole size of the array divided by the size of each individual element, which will tell us how many elements are in the array. So now I can say thread array at i is equal to this. And then I also have to create a thread context for this one. So I'll say thread context array at i is equal to malloc size of thread context. Then I'll just initialize it quickly. I should give an ID as well. And actually we don't need to malloc this because we allocated memory for each third context right here so we can just do it directly. So we say ID is equal to i plus one. Then I'll say the global arena is going to be equal to Actually, you have to create the arena first, so I have to say malloc size of arena and then scratch arena or scratch pool at zero. Then we do the same for the other scratch pool. Then we have to initialize all these arenas so we can do arena in it. So 64 kilobytes just to test it out let me do all right let me just pass in this that context You have to pass a reference to it, one of these arenas.
Let's see what the errors are. Okay, that compels. So if I run it, I feel got no errors. So what should happen now is if I I'll do this. So if I do char point of string is equal to push arena alloc aligned. That's arena alloc. So you pass in our global arena. We'll say 100 elements, size of char, a line of char. I'll just copy a string into here. And then I'll do the same for another arena. So I'll say if ctx.id is equal to 1. Else, we'll do another string. So now, if I run this, okay. So I'll I'll open up my debugger right here so we can see each thread individually. So if I just go here, I put a breakpoint. Here. Okay, so it seems like this should not have been a temp arena. It should have just been a simple pointer to an arena. So I'll just change this quickly. So then, if I go to the definition of third context, I just change this to an arena pointer. So now, if you compile this. Compels fine. So if you run in the debug again, we should be able to see the variables properly. So here, if I do thread context array, let's see five. So this is the first thread, ID one. Look at the global arena right now; it's empty. But once I create the thread, as you can see, we got. Let's sort of give it a bit of time. It copied hello world in there, right? Now in all these other arenas, we should just see another string being printed out. So if I quickly just go through all of them, as you can see, we've got another string in the other, the second um, thread, then the third thread as well. We should get another string, and as we create more threads, it's going to they're going to have their own another string inside of each of their own local global arenas. So this is how we can create thread local arenas or per thread arenas and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I made some other videos about arenas and also about hash maps which you might find interesting. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys later. Bye.